Hi and welcome to Conversations with Des. I'm Des Blanchfield. I'm joined by Jason Inskip. Jason is the Director for 5G Center of Excellence at at t Business. Jason, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Hey, pr- appreciate you having me and I feel privileged after seeing a lot of my peers uh, working with you there, so thank you. Indeed, it's very long overdue. Um, now, I wanted to have a conversation around your mobility solutions and, and a combination of the business and technology challenges that organizations are faced with, not just here in 2020 as we're wrapping up the year, but also uh, as we're looking to ease into 2021 and hopefully a slightly more normal year. Um, I wonder if we could just start up with uh, some of the current challenges that business face in leveraging mobility solutions. Um, you know, uh, there's no secret that mobility solutions are often a challenging topic for organizations to grapple with. It's a very broad, technical and deep topic. I wonder if you could just give us a brief outline of some of the challenges that you and your team at at t Business at your 5G Center of Excellence are seeing businesses face around mobility currently. Yeah, I mean, you've got the obvious, you know, 800 pound gorilla in the room right now with COVID that's changing a whole lot of different things and different ways we look at the world as it is. Um, obviously, coming along with that right now is just the, the digital transformation shift with 5G. Right? I mean, that, that's a massive shift as well. It's different than prior networks and the way it can do things. It's becoming more than just speeds and feeds, right? It's no longer just who's the fastest, what's your map look like, and what's going on. That's table stakes, right? Uh, the, the thing that the second thing it's about it it's about convergence, right? So as you think about you know solving some of the challenges that were underway uh, with working from home or working in different environments. You know, it's very important that the application, whether it's, you know, the social uh, tools we're using for collaboration now, they've got to meet with the network, right? Because you've got all these, these different competing things at home. How do they converge and get to the right experience for the users? And all of that really helps to enable this user-defined construct, right? That, that's really not been possible when you look at mobility, especially in the cellular sense, uh, for quite some time. Uh, now that it's all in software, that allows a, a broader continuum of control for our customers in terms of how they want to build their network. And, and, you know, giving them that sort of control, giving them that sort of ability, again, is going to allow some new technologies and new things to, you know, hopefully get past this, this you know, challenging time that we're in. If there was one area we've seen organizations uh, uh, leverage uh, more than any uh, to help them deal with the likes of work from home and support frontline workers and, and certainly in retail, um, it is it is surely been mobility technologies. I wonder if you could share some of the ways that AT&T Business Mobility Solutions have been able to help customers deal with some of the challenges that 2020 has presented to them. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, obviously the, the first shift that I started to see and actually had a customer pointed out is you know, they had you know, used to have 80 percent of their people in the office and then they flipped it to 80 percent of their people working from home. So that you know shifted the whole routing paradigm of how the traffic came in. Right. Everybody was on the business connectivity yeah. portion and now go home and get on so the the weight shifted for them and i think you know all operators you saw them you know take care of that really well right in terms of that shift right so that, that software defined networks really help to do that at the same token you know when i look at what our teams have done around first net with first responder network right to help those folks get what they need having that priority and preemption so that you know they can take care of those 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 people that are that are challenged and having having a hard time of it right so that's been good to see, you know, obviously not being able to see people on different holiday weekends and just a massive increase in the messages. And I'm, I'm proud that the network, you know, stood up, did what it needed to, and, and again, took care of the customers and, and, and driving that data, again, from a different point of view, right? And um, it, it's good to see that, and it's a tribute to what, what's happened both from a transition and, and as we continue to scale. The, the, the other challenges, though, that you start to see and you're starting to hear more about start to get to, you know, when you question this mobility, well, how how does my security perimeter look, right? What does that look like today? Good news is there's a lot of inherent security that's there, and especially when we're, you know, what I do with 5G, and you're seeing that continue to grow, right, in terms of the things that they're inherent and then how they can bridge. And again, we talk conversions. How do those two marry up, right? How does authentication share? How do we continue to make that uh, better? Because anytime you're expanding things like this, there's always an opportunity and a risk for, for those the bad guys to, to try something. And again, we want to make sure we're continuing to stay ahead of that so that there's a comfort feeling, whether I'm in the office or I'm at home, my experience, not only from a usability perspective, but also from a protection, security, and data perspective is all taken care of. Good news of that is that they inherit a lot of security functions from the, the standards bodies, right? And then you've got a carrier layer that sits on top of that. So you get, you know, two layers, whether it's error interface encryption um, that comes inherent with cellular, the authentication and identity is, is uh, protected, 
the session by session separation. But they're still either end of that is where the hackers are sniffing around, right? So we've done things from a standards perspective, but you add more layers, right? And, and then it's what's your risk reward paradigm? And I think going back to the earlier point, there's the inherent pieces. There's new opportunities coming. The edge is going to push you to think about that more, right? Because anywhere there's an edge, okay, there's an opportunity for business driver, but at the same time, there's an opportunity for the hacker, right? So it's how do we make that handoff happen uh, nice and smooth, getting to that, uh, you know, kind of rethink of what, what that looks like. I think that's a great opportunity too, most certainly. Indeed. In fact, with that in mind, I wonder if you could maybe give us some insight on, you know, around where at and Business is focusing its attention uh, to deliver those world-class mobility solutions. I mean, as we, as you mentioned, you know, as we ease out of 2020, uh, a year that we're all fairly uh, keen to forget, and a new year is just around the corner uh, with 2021, where is at and fo focusing its attention to support customers looking to leverage mobility technologies and solutions uh, as we enter into 2021? in some industries, right, you're seeing them take up a different way to approach the world because of what's happened, uh, especially in the industrial space, right? They own all the data. They own all the devices. They own all the equipment. They can implement it because they own the data. So now you're seeing them take on, whether it's private LTE or private 5G, you're seeing them actually start to do the deployments, right? So that's starting to happen. Now they're starting to build the bridge on top. You look at the other end where it may be uh, retailers, right? They're shifting, thinking, all right, what about e-commerce? How do I you know, up the e-commerce given that with current times, it's, it's hard to get people in the stores, right? So you're seeing this shift in, you know, how we need to move data around. And for us and the way I try to think about it is, how do I, first of all, you know, remove the G, stop thinking about the G and just think about the journey of the packet, right? And then what does the journey of the packet lead to from an optimal experience? Because the, the good news of software is, frankly, I can do whatever I want. The, the bad news of software is, frankly, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> so it's how do we get to that, uh, you know, optimal Goldilocks chair experience per se. I like that. I like your Goldilocks analogy of... Uh in many ways and, and indeed and you've touched on an interesting point there and that is that often we thought of, we get very excited about 5g as a concept but you know people say well it's not just another g and i often remind them well that, that's a very good point take as you said take the g away and start thinking about what's possible uh and how you can leverage it either from a business and operational point of view or a technology point of view and stop obsessing about it potentially just being another faster mobile phone technology uh particularly if it's in manufacturing robotics or logistics or aviation or healthcare education there are so many different use cases which we can talk about yeah. in another day i wonder if i can ask you one last question then before we wrap up i mean you know as we mentioned we're we're coming out of the end of 2020 we're starting a new year with 2021 businesses are now faced with developing their mobility strategies for 2021 I'm seeing boards around the world faced with this challenge of developing their mobility strategies for 2021. Uh, what do you think, given the amazing perspective you've got in your role and certainly inside your organization, at t Business, what do you think boards should be looking at as they develop their uh, 2021 mobility technology and uh, solution strategies? It's a great question. I think uh, if you ask me it tomorrow, I'll probably give you a different answer. You ask me a day <laughs> after that, I'll probably get a different answer because it's changing that fast, right? I mean, it, it literally is. Every time I see something new that one of my peers is working on from a, you know, what's coming perspective, I'm like, oh, well, well, I see how the business could look for that. So I think, you know, as I think about that, it's really trying to get the folks to become unicorns. Prior to late LTE, you know, from a cellular perspective, your continuum of control wasn't, you know, you didn't have a lot, right? Now I've moved into 5G and the private stuff that's coming out, commoditization of spectrum, Customers have just tons and tons of options that they can look at, and you can get into paralysis by analysis in some cases. So it, a lot of ways is just getting educated, not only educated technically, but how this will affect you operationally. And from my perspective, what we've really tried to do is look at ways that we can let use case drive connectivity versus being inhibited by it. And, and that oftentimes is, is the hardest challenge, right, because you get so enamored by the tech uh, that you miss the the so what of the horizontal application, right? Getting to, you know, make it ducks and bunnies, right? What is happening here? How do we simplify that? And that ultimately gets to scale. And uh, like I said, I re repeat this because it's really where my mantra is and the team's mantra is, is just don't get wrapped up in, 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 uh, in, in the connectivity, right? Let use case drive it. Uh, so you won't be inhibited by it. And ultimately, if we do that, all the other things around the right speeds, feeds, latencies, convergence, and all the other things come together in an optimal manner. 
So that's kind of where my head's at. And I think next 12 months, if they get that right, they can start planning and building as you move into tw- late 21 and into 22. Fantastic advice. I, I love all of that. As you said, you know, think about the use cases, think about the way that it's going to generate a, a business benefit before we obsess about the technology. And, and, and as you said, you know, it's so easy to get excited about the new shiny thing and then forget about the whole uh, rationale behind it. Well, you, well, you kind of got to do both, though, right? You kind of got to do both at the same time. I think, yeah. you know, we, we talk about this agile fail fast mentality a lot. Um, and, and software development, but oftentimes it's fail fast from a technical perspective. And technical is fail fast is usually black or white. It either works or it doesn't, right? But when you look at operational fail fast, most of the time it's gray, right? Is it, am I going to make a lot of money or a little money? And is it going to cost <laughs> me a lot or a little? And then if I do this, it'll change it a little, right? The technical piece is usually the easy eval- evaluation. The operational piece is the challenge. So you want, again, in a perfect world, you want both to work together so you have that uh, the technical is holding the operational accountable and vice versa in a perfect world. Indeed. And I guess as a closing point, uh, uh, something that I often advise our viewers and listeners to, to consider very seriously, and that is, a, and I'd love to get your take on this, uh, sooner than later is probably the best time to reach out to yourself and your team at at t Business to have those conversations around strategy and design and planning and implementation, so forth and deployment, because they can then look to avoid a whole range of pitfalls you've already seen elsewhere and lessons you've learned from other implementations and designs. So I often advise people to reach out as soon as possible in that journey rather than leaving it till the point where they think they've got a problem and got to solve it. Is that generally the advice you're giving to people beyond the typical sales pitch, but to start a conversation as early as possible around development of strategy, around the planning, and then the design and deployment? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, right? I mean, it, the, the, the knowledge set that comes with cellular, right, is in the operators, again, AT&T, it's in the, the OEMs of the world. It's, it's not a household thing in terms of the customers, right? So when I look at it from a cellular perspective, Absolutely. Right. The network's changing. Things are changing. So getting that education from the source, but you know, get it from multiple sources. Right. Because there's different 5G is a different flavor. There's multiple flavors. I think our flavor is the best probably because I had a lot to do with it. And I think it's definitely good for the enterprise flavor. Right. Because we're trying to think about the entire journey of the packet, not just the cellular side, not just the speeds, feeds and maps. And I think as we think about that, it brings that end to end together for the customer. Fantastic. Well, Jason Inskip, it's been fantastic to spend some time with you on camera. Thank you so much for making time for me. I really appreciated getting some insights uh, from you personally and also certainly from the perspective of your role as director of the 5G Center of Excellence there at at t Business. Hopefully you uh, and your crew, uh, both family and work-wise, stay safe through the uh, Christian holiday period and Christmas. And uh, we'll look forward to having you back in the show uh, early in 2021 and we can recap and see how we went with our predictions. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. It was great to be here. Thank you much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.